Hello everybody, welcome to the third video on the basics of HTML. In this video, we'll dive into more HTML elements as we build the home page of the band website. And by the end of this video, we'll have created all of the HTML needed for the home page of our website. Before we get started coding, let's cover a few of the concepts that we will be utilizing, starting with HTML elements. If you have ever tried to use a greater than or less than sign in the text of your HTML, you may notice that it does not render and actually messes with your entire page rendering. This is because these symbols, along with many more, are special symbols that are used in HTML for signifying start and end tags. In order to render these symbols, we must use HTML entities. An HTML entity is written by writing an ampersand and pound sign, followed by the number that corresponds to the symbol. For example, this is the code that will render the less than symbol. Remembering which numbers correspond to which symbols can be quite difficult though. This is why the most common symbols, such as the less than sign, have a name that can be used instead of the number. This is the code for the less than symbol using the name as opposed to the number. When you use the name of the symbol instead of the number, make sure that you do not include the pound sign after the ampersand. The next major concept is the idea of meaningless elements. So far, we have only learned about elements that have inherent meaning. For example, the header element is used to wrap the header of a page, the nav element is for the navigation section, and the h1 element is for a heading. HTML has many, many elements that have specific meaning, but sometimes a section of your page does not have any special meaning, or there is no HTML that conveys the meaning you want. This is where meaningless elements come in. There are two different meaningless elements, div and span. These elements are the same in every way, except that the div element is a block element, meaning that it will appear on a separate line from the content around it, similar to the paragraph tag. The span element, on the other hand, is an inline element and thus appears inline with the content around it. If this does not make sense yet, the differences between these two elements will become apparent as we write the HTML for this lesson. Essentially, all you need to know about meaningless elements is that they should be used any time you need to group together HTML that either has no meaning or there is no HTML tag to describe the meaning. Now that we got that out of the way, let's jump into the coding of the homepage for the band website. Hello everybody, welcome to the coding section of this video. As you can see on the left, I have Visual Studio Code open with the project we left off in the last video, and on the right, I have the final version of the band homepage. To get started, we should copy the about.html page and rename it to index.html. This is because the about page shares the same header and the same footer as our home page. We now can get rid of the section in the middle that contains the about content since we will not need that on the home page. The reason that we named this page index.html is because the index page is the page that is shown when you leave nothing after the website URL. So if we remove this slash index.html and hit enter, you'll see that it renders the exact same thing that is inside the index.html. And if we change this, save it, you'll see it shows up there. Now let's get started with the actual content of this page. Let's jump back to the image that we have to use as a reference and get started with the header. As you can see, inside the header we have an additional button for get our la latest album and another button for the play button. To create these elements, we'll use the button element. The button element will render a button on the page as we can see here. And if we give it some text, such as what is on this page, get our latest album, you'll see that it renders a button that we can click on our page. Let's do the same exact thing for the play button. Now we can't actually just show this image with a normal button key press. We have to use an HTML entity that we talked about earlier. The code for this entity is as follows. This will render the play button as we can see here. As you may notice, our two buttons on this same line as opposed to on different lines like they are in this image. This is because the button is an inline element as opposed to a block element. In order to get around this problem, we can use a tag called the line break tag, which is the BR tag. The BR tag adds a line break wherever it is, so if we put it after this button, it'll create a line break right here before the next button. And if we save that, on the right you can see that they are on separate lines. Now we want a little bit more spacing than this between our elements, so we'll use another line break element in order to create a little bit of a gap between our two buttons. That is all the HTML that we're going to need for the header section. But as you can see in this homepage view, that there is a giant background image that is applied for the entire header. In order to remind us that we need to create this background image and find it later, 
let's add a comment into the code. To do this, use an exclamation point followed by two dashes, which will create a comment in the code. Comments do not actually render any information on the HTML page, but they show up in the code so that you can remind yourself or other people that use this code what certain things mean or what to do. So for example, let's create just a to-do comment that tells us that we need to find a suitable background image. There we go. So now if we go back to our page, you can see that that does not actually render, but it shows up in the code for us to reference later. Now let's go on to the middle section of our page. In the middle section of our page, we will use a section element just as we did for the about section of our code to wrap all of this stuff in our tours section. And you can see that we have a header called tours just like we had in the about section. So let's create an H2 and add the text tours into that and view that to make sure that that shows up correctly. Next, we have a few rows that display all of the tour dates for our upcoming tours of the generics band. There is no actual HTML element to denote a row for example, in this scenario. So what we are going to do is we are going to wrap our entire set of rows in a div, which is a meaningless element that we talked about earlier. This will make it a block element, so that way these items will not appear on the exact same line as each other. We will then wrap each individual row in a div of its own. So this outside div here is wrapping all of these rows, and then each one of these rows has its own div that will contain just the text inside of it. Now let me add the text inside of the rows. Now as you can see, if we go over to our page, we have the different text rendered for all of the text in the row. But it doesn't quite look right. First off, we need this July 16th date to be bolded. In order to do this in HTML, we will use what's called a strong tag. The strong tag denotes something that is important. In most cases, it means that the text inside of the strong tags will be bolded, but in some scenarios, the text will actually not be bolded. For example, if you're using a screen reader, if you are blind, the text will have special emphasis when it speaks it back to you because you cannot actually see bold versus non-bold. Let's put our July 16th inside of that strong tag, save it, and go back to our browser to see that that is actually bolded now. Next, we have the text for Detroit and the text for the actual place that the performance is in. Let's wrap these in span tags. Span tags are the other meaningless element that we talked about, and this denotes an inline element. If we go to our rendered version of our page, you can see that these elements do not break the lines as these block elements from the div do. If we were to change this to be a div, you can see that now it breaks both on the top and the bottom of the line. Let's change that back to a span. Lastly, we need to create the button for our final element. Let's wrap this buy tickets text inside of a button element. Now if we go back to our page, we can see that that is now a clickable button. One more thing to note about these buttons is that they can have a type to them, which is an HTML attribute. In this case, you can have the type of button, menu, reset, or submit. In our case, since this is just a generic button, we want to use the button type. Let's copy that and paste that into our other buttons as well, since they are also generic buttons. Lastly, we need to add an HR element that we talked about in the previous video to the end of our row, because we have this underline here that we want to incorporate. Now, if we go back, we can see that we have this underline under our row. You may notice though that the text is very close together with almost no spacing between them. You may think that in order to fix this, you can add a bunch of spaces after your text, and if you save that, you would think that a bunch of spaces would show up after this. But if you save it, you see that that does not happen. HTML actually removes all of the extra spaces after any element, whether it's a space, a tab, even if you put an enter new line in here and save it, it'll remove all of those at the end of your element. In order to get around this and actually include some space in between our elements, we're going to use, use temporary, the less than, and greater than symbols that we talked about earlier with the HTML entities. Let's go after our strong tag here and write the code for less than and the code for greater than. Now you can see that we have a little bit of a space between our text. Let's copy and paste this in between all of the different elements of the row. 
and now there's a little bit of spacing so that it's easier to see which element is which. The last thing that we need to do in order to get our page to be exactly the same as this is copy this row and create all the text needed for the rest of these rows. I'm going to do that real quick now. We now have all of the code that we need for these sections. If we go back to this page, we can see that all of our rows are now being rendered, and they all look correct, except you see that we have this additional underline on the last row. So go back to our code and remove that final HR element. Now we have exactly the same HTML that we have on this page. The last thing we should do is delete this placeholder text that we added in here at the beginning, and now we are perfect. The only thing left to do is to add some elements to the head. As you can see at the top, this title of our page, it just shows the URL of the page that we are on. If we want to change that, we can use a title element in the head section of our HTML. This will actually not show up anywhere on the body of our page, but it will be used by the browser to set the title of our page on the tab. Let's just set the title to the generics. And if we save, you can see that now it recreates the title of our page. Another common element in the head section is a meta tag. The meta tag has a bunch of different things that we can define for it based on what we set for the name attribute, but in our case we want to set the description of our page. This description is used by the browser to show a little bit of a description of your page under the title whenever you search in Google for example, along with other places. For us, let's just set any title which we set inside of the content section of this tag. Let's just say this is the description and close off that meta tag. Now as you see when we save, nothing actually changes on our page because this is inside of the head of our page. If we were to upload this page to the internet and do a Google search for it, you'll see that this description will show up underneath of the title of our page inside of the Google browser results. Now let's go to our about page and do the exact same thing inside of the head. Just paste this in here, change the title from the generics to the generics about, and we can keep the description exactly the same. That's all that there is to creating the HTML for our index page. Congratulations, you know almost everything you need to know about HTML. In the next video, we will cover the final components of HTML and create the last page of the band website. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and let me know down in the comments what made you want to learn web development. Thanks for watching.